B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. For 10 years, the Children's Institute has been advocating for high quality early childhood education. Through innovative policy solutions, we've helped change the odds for some of Oregon's youngest and most vulnerable citizens. Today we are entering an exciting new phase of our work. The Early Works Initiative at Earl Boyles Elementary School connects families to services and programs at the earliest possible moment in a child's life. The project is a model, for policymakers and educators, of a new kind of public education. It's also grounded in data. Decisions are made based on the research we've gathered about the community. This year, as part of that initiative, there are two publicly funded preschool classes at Earl Boyles Elementary in Southeast Portland. In these classes, we're fostering the early learning continuum that begins long before L. kindergarten. And what L. sound does L make? Um, most kids came in not knowing any letter sounds, couldn't identify numbers, could count maybe to five, but if I said, well, what number is this? Didn't know. Um, couldn't recognize their name. Um, now, most students recognize everyone else's name. I think also behaviorally, there's been huge gains. It's just because most of them had never been in any kind of academic Why setting. Her name, Mumtaz, can I have red? Mumtaz, can I have red? There are 34 preschool students at Earl Boyles. Thank you. Each one of their unique stories is a testimony to the benefits of this program. We originally took him in because we thought he just maybe had a speech delay. They said, okay, we think we're looking at autism, and immediately I started to cry. A lot of times, doors start closing for you. Because of the multiple public funding streams that support the Earl Boyles Preschool, the classroom has a diverse group of students, including some with special needs. The benefits for John of being in a mixed classroom are tremendous. John is being oh, very yes. Quiet. John is very quiet. Him starting at this Earl Boyle's preschool, the, you know, will cl dark clouds are parting and he's more of a functioning child. Nice work, John. As in most high needs communities in Oregon, families here face many obstacles. In Kenya, Mukhtar Abdo gave up his dream of his own education in order to do what was best for his family and immigrated to the U.S. He wants something different for his daughter, Mumtaz, who attends the preschool. I want to send all my kids to the university to get a better education than me. So the opportunity or the choices is for them, whatever they be, to be a doctor, to be a teacher, to be this, is for them. But for me, I want to make sure them, they learn a lot than me. Mukhtar realizes that as non-native English speakers, he and his wife are at a disadvantage to help their daughter learn. So the parents, they don't read and write. If the parents, they can't read and write, so how they can help their kid? Good job. Wow, nice job, Mukhtar. I'm gonna write your name. And then we have one more game. She's one of our brightest kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's one of our brightest and most articulate kids that we have. Many parents here agree that the preschool and the Early Works Initiative help them give their children what they alone can't provide. It's been like night and day, having loose in preschool. It's really changed everything. If she wasn't in school, she would have been bored. I do my best to keep her entertained, but she would have been here alone with me during the day, watching TV. Luce's mother, Karina Armenta, says these benefits extend to the whole family. When I came to the school before, I didn't feel included. Now, I'm coming not just as Luz's mom, but with a feeling that I have a place here. I'm important, valued. I'm learning so much that I feel like a student myself sometimes, as well as a member of the community. Um, it's a gift to the kindergarten teachers and all the teachers they will have after that because these kids are not starting behind. And they might have, if they didn't have this experience, and it's a gift to the kids. It's also a promise to the rest of Oregon. As a demonstration project, this initiative provides critical lessons for others working to connect early learning with early grades. 
In fact, it's already grown beyond Earl Boyles. As a result of a partnership between the Children's Institute, the Ford Family Foundation, and Yonkala Elementary School, a second early work site in Southern Oregon launched last fall. We're a small school, 200 approximately kindergarten to eighth grade, a small town. In many ways, the school is the center of the town. It's a proud school and a very proud town. I think that the latest jolt to the economy really took its toll on our little district. The most exciting thing about the Early Works Initiative is it provides a way for communities to evaluate themselves and to examine themselves to look at and see how can they provide services for children pre-birth through third grade. It, it's really exciting to me that especially small rural communities or impoverished communities of any kind might have the opportunity then to be able to problem solve around what services do we want for our children. Over half of the districts in Oregon are tiny, small districts. We all realized that this would give us a process, that it was more than what can this do for Yonkala, that it was what can this do for the state of Oregon or other small communities. To me that's really exciting that a project that's starting here could be replicated in communities across the state. With the Early Works Initiative, the Children's Institute has expanded its breadth and depth in championing early learning. We are connecting policy to practice in new and exciting ways. There is still much work to do, but we cannot do it alone. Please join us and help ensure that all children in Oregon are ready for success in school and in life.